Okay, so some people actually might be sort of taken aback and annoyed by the fact that you could take an imaginary number, like i, the square root of minus 1, and just square it, and all of a sudden it becomes a real number. Some people, in fact, may say, that's nonsense. Of course, those people, well, they probably wear really thick shoes, and well, I don't want to go into it. But anyway, the reality is that while i, square, while I itself is an imaginary number, it's imaginary because it actually satisfies this property. It's some imaginary number such that its square turns out to be the negative 1, because no real number satisfies that. So in fact, those people that think, oh, this makes no sense, well, well the people that I know that know. Okay. However, what if we now take i and raise it to the third power? What would that equal? Well, let's figure that out. i cubed. Well, one way of thinking about i cubed is saying, well, it's just i squared times another i. Well, i squared we know is negative 1, so in fact, I see that this is just negative 1 times i, so it's negative i. So in fact, i cubed has sort of a simple, a simple way of saying it. It's just negative i. It's the same thing as negative i. And why? Well, because minus i, minus, I'm sorry, because i squared is just negative 1, and so this just contributes a negative sign. What about i to the fourth? i to the fourth would be what? Well, that would be i squared times i squared. Oh, can you hear that? There's like a plane that's flying so low I have to duck. Hold on. Okay. Wow. And notice that this is just minus 1 times minus 1. And that equals 1. So this is really neat. i equals, well, the square root of minus 1. i squared, we know, equals minus 1. We see that i cubed is just minus i. i to the fourth is just 1. What would i to the fifth be? Well, i to the fifth would just be i to the fourth times i. Well, i to the fourth is 1, so we just get i again. And what would i to the sixth be? Now look over there. i to the sixth is this going to be i to the fourth times i squared. Well, i to the fourth is just 1, so we just get i squared, which is minus 1. So look, we go right back down this list again. So what I'm saying is the following. If you take a look, here's the, the list that we just made up. We have that i equals the square root of negative 1, i squared equals negative 1, i cubed equals minus i, and i to the fourth equals 1. But now if you want to know what i to the fifth is, just go back to the beginning. That's i. i to the sixth would be here, i to the seventh would be here, this would be i to the eighth, i to the ninth, i to the tenth, i to the eleventh, i to the eleventh. So it's just i, 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 i. I, 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 i. Oh no, don't look at that. Canta no yourness. You know that song. Okay. Now, so, so the question, the point is that you can now find any power of i that you want. And all you've got to do is figure out where you're going to be bubbling up on this chart. This chart has four entries. So basically, all you've got to do is take the exponent and divide it by four and see what the remainder is. Let me show you with a very specific example. If we take a look at i to the fourth power, I'm sorry, the 40th power, what does that equal? Well, that would equal i. And notice that's 4 times 10 in the exponent. So using laws of exponents, I could write that as i to the 4th all raised to the 10th. But i to the 4th is 1. So this is just 1 to the 10, which equals 1. So in fact, this is just 1. And the way to see that is that I just have gone through this list 10 times, but where do I land? It's sort of like imagine you know, on one of those game shows where you spin the wheel. It's like the question is, where do you land at the end? If you imagine having this thing and spinning it, if you're going to do it 10 times, you're going to end right here. Because 40, 4 goes into 40 an even number of times, and so there's no remainder. What about something like this? What about i to the 223rd power? Well, you're going to spin through this. Where are you going to end? Well, it depends on how many times 4 goes into 240, uh, 223. So if you do that out, you can take 4 and divide it into 240, uh, 223. And what you would see is 55, and there would be a remainder of 3. So what that means is you would go through here 55 times completely. And then when you're all done, you're going to go 3 more times. So in fact, it's going to be minus i. So what I'm saying is the following. This equals i to the, now what's that number? We saw it was 4 times 55 plus a remainder of 3. And if you use laws of exponents, that equals 
i to the fourth all raised to the 55. And since I'm adding exponents, I multiply the bases, and I get that. Well, i to the fourth is just the one. So in fact, that's just one. And so all I'm left with is i cubed. And that's exactly what happened. i cubed, and that equals minus i. So all you have to do is divide by 4 and see what the remainder is. So for example, i to the 200, 2001, what would that be? Well, that's just if you divide by 4, I'd see 4 times 500. That gives me 2,000. And then plus 1. So the remainder is plus 1. So I'm going to go through here 500 times. And where do I end up? I end up right here, the first one. So this actually will equal i. So if you have really high powers of i, not a problem. Just divide the power by 4, see what the remainder is, and that's where you're going to be on this list, because you're going to spin around the, the quotient number of times, and then the remainder is going to tell you where you end up. No problem. High powers of i, we can do it.